correlation and match filter receivers. This is Dr. Ali McGibbel. And to get to know more about, to get the slides and additional resources, please search my name, McGibbel, and get into the course website. The outline of this presentation, of this video, will we'll start with the correlation receiver and will show its equivalence to the matched filter. Then we'll discuss the rotation of signal constellation and the translation of signal constellation. That will lead us to the, make, to the minimum energy signals. In coming videos, we will link this to the union bound pairwise error probability and bit and symbol error probabilities. So for now, we'll just focus on these four, uh, four items. What is the optimum receiver? Uh, the optimum receiver under the following assumptions with equally likely estimated signals, that's S1 up to SM, are produced at the same probability. And if we assume that the channel is additive wide Gaussian noise, the optimum receiver will have two components. One is the detector, which converts the waveform into an uh, observation vector. So this part consists of a bank of N product integrators or correlators, that's the product and that's the integration or the correlation process. <coughs> Sorry, Alhamdulillah. That has input X of T and output observation vector X. So this is the first part, which is the detection process. The second part of the optimum receiver is the decoder. The decoder is shown here, sorry, in this area, because this is just this part is just a repetition of what we have here. That's the inner product integrator. That's the uh, correlator. Of course, integration or accumulation is just the same thing. So this decoder will get the observation vector and make a decision, make an estimate on what was transmitted m hat. The decoder performs maximum likelihood decision. The maximum likelihood is, a, is the optimum decoder uh, on the observation vector X to obtain the estimate M hat. So our estimate will tell us what was transmitted to the best guess, such that the, aver the average probability of error is minimized. So we have a criteria for being optimal, which is optimal on the average probability of error. We would like to minimize this. So let's summarize this again. An optimum receiver under the following assumptions is a correlator receiver. The optimum receiver is a correlator receiver or a product integrator or inner product calculator. And then followed by a maximum a decoder that specifically is a maximum likelihood decision rule that maximizes the likelihood or minimizes the error probability. A detector followed by a decoder. The decode the detector is a correlator receiver. The equivalence of a correlator and the match filter receivers. Uh, the detector part in the correlation receiver, which we just have shown on the left side, has a set of n correlators. Those correlators can be uh, replaced with matched filters without losing anything. So we'd like to show the equivalence of a correlator to a match filter. Uh, a match filter has an impulse response small h of t and is uh, assumed to be a linear time invariant filter linear that superposition applies time invariant does not change one time so if anything goes x of t to the signal to this to this uh, match filter the output would be y of t which is of course the correlation between the input and the following impulse response now why do we call it matched because it has the same shape it's matched to the shape of the basis functions. So h of t is matched to the input signal and um, is, which is assumed to be uh, related to the basis. So uh, it is a time reversed and delayed version of, 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 the, of the basis. You can see here that there's a minus sign for t and there is a delay by capital T. So what would be the output? The output would be the convolution between the received signal and this impulse response of the match filter. So you get the following convolution equation. If you replace H of T with H equivalent uh, reversed and time shifted signal, I got the following. So give me the signal and Y of T, the output of the match filter will, will be given by the following integral. We're claiming that this is equivalent 
to the product uh, to the to the correlator so now we continue with trying to show that a match filter and correlator are equivalent what you see here is again a reproduction of the last equation where we have the output is uh, the uh, is a convolution with the following um, matched signal matched to the basis which is shifted and uh, reversed now because we are dealing with digital systems we will sample we'll take the reading only at t equal to capital t and that's at the end of the period so although we are, con we are getting a continuous output function because of being digital communication we only need to look at the output or consider the output and make decision every capital t which is the time duration of a sample so if you now um, compare take t here and substitute for time you'll find out that um, t will cancel with capital t will cancel out and we got the following and what is this this is nothing but the product integrator if you like uh, this is the correlator so for phi z equal to zero outside the region because if you are only interested in the observation of the symbol time uh, of course then we can say that the output y of t here which is on, shown in green is equivalent to the to the jth correlator as we can see here this is exactly correlation multiply and integrate so uh, we can say that this is equivalent to integration from 0 to t because all other times will not be observed because we are only interested we just mentioned we are only interested in this time so then we have equivalence we have established the equivalence detection part of the correlator receiver can be implemented by a rank a bank of n matched filters followed by samplers at t equal to capital t don't get this wrong correlators and match filter are not exactly the same but if we sample at t equal to capital t then this specific number will be exactly the same so we can have correlation or matched filter this is important because when we speak about performance in wireless communication we want to know what is the receiver that was used because changing the receiver will change the result this is a summary of what we did but instead of uh, showing uh, the detector part on the left hand side is with correlator and the detector this is not um, uh, a decoder it's just another detector one time we're showing it here with a correlator and here it's shown with the match filter now let's show the invariance of probability of error to rotation and translation we'll start with the rotation that's to say if we have a constellation and remember that um, the constellation is uh, important because we're going to make partitions and make decisions so the partition of the signal z and the identified Gaussian noise and maximum likelihood decision rule will depend on this uh, constellation diagram and we, where we make decisions because we're going to divide this area into uh, uh, this uh, space into areas and whenever we have a received point we'll make a decision based on which area this point is in assuming maximum likelihood decision assuming equal pro uh, pro probability and assuming identified Gaussian noise channel so these constellation diagram are very important for the performance in this slide we establish the fact that rotating the, the constellation just rotating will not change the probability of error so rotation of signal constellation does not affect the p probability of error why remember that the noise uh, the gaussian noise in 2d would be uh, symmetric and when we change when we rotate everything uh, everything just will remain the same identified gaussian noise is spherically symmetric in all directions in signal space that's if we have uh, 3d uh, if a signal constellation is rotated by orthonormal transformation like we go from here to here if the transformation is orthonormal then the transformation going is like will be equivalent to multiplying by a q matrix and this q matrix if it's orthonormal matrix then the probability of error is the same unchanged considering that we have the same assumptions of maximum likelihood and additive white Gaussian noise channel the example is shown here that's rotating it rotating this constellation will just give the same whether this right or left right or left will give you the same constellation by the way the meaning of orthogonal matrix is shown to be a real square matrix whose columns and rows are orthogonal anyhow 
you don't worry about the, the, the matrix transformation. What you need to understand is from the constellation diagram that we have n variance of probative error due to rotation. We'll see in the next slide the translation. Let's consider the principle of translation and variance. <clears throat> um, we will show that translating or shifting the constellation diagram should not change the probative error. Consider a translation of all signals in the constellation by A. So the points will be shifted by an amount of A. After the translation, we'll get the new constellation points to be SI bar. That's true for 1 up to M, which, which, where M is a capital, uh, capital M is the number of symbols. So whatever we get at the receiver side will be shifted in the same way. The, the observation vector would be X minus A, same translation, and that would give you X bar. How far these from each other? Okay, if you subtract them from each other, you will find out that the A will cancel out. So in a similar manner, the Euclidean distance, considering the translation uh, observation vector, X minus SI, okay, if you subtract them, then A would cancel with minus minus A, and what remains X is A for all values of I. So A does not show up as a difference between the observed vector and, and the points in the constellation. If a signal constellation is translated by a constant vector amount, which is A here, the probability of error is unchanged considering maximum likelihood and, of course, identified Gaussian noise charm. So we're doing everything here for the same assumptions, which are maximum likelihood detection and identified Gaussian noise charm. To show this as an example, uh, on the left side here, we have the four uh, level PAM, pulse amplitude modulation, or if you like, if the bases are, if these are, if these are pulses, if these are, we can also have, if these are sinusoid, we can have amplitude shift keying. And we can see here that another constellation diagram, which is basically shifted, okay, to the right. In terms of probative error, in terms of probative error, they will have the same performance. Yes, in terms of energy, this could be more efficient, but in terms of probative error, um, translation invariance, translating the vector right or left does not change the fact about the probative error. So uh, how translation is helpful? As we said, if this is given, we can have less power. So we'll see in the coming slide how to utilize translation to get more efficient energy. So let's introduce, let us introduce the concept of minimum energy signals. The energy for all symbols, given that of every symbol has a given probability, can be, trans, can be written as this. The energy over the symbols would equal to the sum of all possible symbols. This is the energy, which is the norm squared. And of course, we have to scale every symbol by its probability. So PI and, and, and blue is the probability of that given symbol. That's, that's kind of logical averaging. What if we make translation? <clears throat> if we translate the signal by a vector A, then the average energy after the translation will be looking at the vector which are translated and will get E bar as the energy uh, of the trans. So changing translation N uh, res results in changing the energy, although it does not change the probability of error, but it changes the energy. So if we can do some translation to get the minimum possible energy, that would be the objective. In minimum energy translate, Given a signal constellation, the corresponding signal constellation with minimum average energy is obtained by subtracting, by moving everything to the center, by subtracting from each energy signal a constant value is. So we can find uh, uh, a minimum energy by translating. So let's do this exercise. In this exercise, we're saying for equally probable symbols, find ES at the minimum energy for both constellation. So you can find the energy here, the energy there, which is the, uh, you can assume that they're all equal probable. So we'll just add and divide by four. So the energy is related to this alpha squared of four, and you continue adding, squaring and adding. You'll find out if you compare these two, I'd like you to write your answers in the comment section, how much is the average energy for, for this uh, first one and the second one. And tell me which one is, is higher. Let's call this number one. This is number two. Then similarly, you can just by inspection see that this guy will have more energy than this guy. You need a little bit of geometry to find the lengths. So 
this is two minus two square root of two a and of course you need to find this tilted lines using Pythagorean uh, formulas and of course you can compare with this but clearly you will find out that this guy constellation tool is expected to have minimum energy because uh, the square the squaring will be less because we're close to the to, to the center point but please do this let's call this problem a problem b and then we have one two and then one two here, uh, here is another practice problem consider the eight points one two three four five six seven eight similarly here uh, consider the two eight point qm we call this qm because it's not phase it's not amplitude shift keying shown in the figure uh, the minimum distance between adjacent point is 2a so the minimum distance of course uh, this is 2a this is the minimum distance you can think of this as 2a okay so then uh, we can uh, if you assume that the distance is 2a would like you first to determine the average transmitted power per symbol okay find the average transmitted power we have the average here, the power here okay for all of them you count the eight you need a little bit of geometry and then you divide by eight that will give you the average per symbol but remember he's also asking per bit so what what do we need to do to find per bit the energy of a symbol and every symbol has three bits so you can find be careful to distinguish between average energy or power per symbol or per bit we use energy or power depending on the basis so if you have if the bases are energy signals we'll speak about energy if this if the bases are power signals we'll speak about power assuming that signals are all equal problem uh, then you need to do this again assume that this is 2a uh, 2a 2a and then repeat the analysis okay so then we say which constellation is more efficient over additive wide gaussian noise channel awgn so a or b please leave your answers in the comment section please uh, leave your answers in the comment section so we can cross check uh, our answers we'll use what we learn here in looking at the performance of while of uh, modulation techniques over wireless communication systems we'll start with awgn and then we'll go into fading channels see you then